Herbert Marvin Ferguson was born on June 26, 1916 in Toms Creek, Virginia. His father was Charles Grant Ferguson and mother Sarah Lou Pierce. Early on, the family settled in a small town called Jenkins Jones, West Virginia, deep in coal country. Grant Ferguson was a coal miner and Sarah a devoted housewife. We grew up in a coal mining, they call it a coal mining camp. His father worked in the coal mine 50 years. Herbert worked in the coal mine just a little bit, some in the summers. Sometime then Herbert left to go to school at Bluefield. We had the same neighbors, the same people, you know, all the time. Uh, like I said, we were a very close-knit group. You know, everybody knew everybody, black and white. You go to the company store and see a bunch of people down at the company store you knew, you know. They had several children, and growing up during the Great Depression of 1929 was not easy. Herbert's siblings were Ural, Elsie, Alfred, Ora, Otilia, and Lucian. In the 1930s, Herbert's sister Elsie decided to take a bold step and move away from coal country to New York City to pursue a career in the great metropolis. My mother went to New York to get a job. You know, people, her and another cousin, her and Rosa went, Rosa Lewis, there were some cousins of ours. Went to New York, and she, you know, back then, she became pregnant and just never came home, you know. Mm -hmm. I found, in that letter I found that you sent, she said something about coming home, but she never did. I was born in New York, mm -hmm. and she died in New York. Daddy went to New York and brought the body and me back on the train. And you know, I don't remember none of this because I was just a few months old. Mm -hmm. But you know, I've had neighbors and people that tell me all about it. I, there have been a hundred people that tell me I was the first one that took you when Mr. Ferguson got off the train with you. If everybody took me who said they took me, I'd taste one day and pull me all apart. And, uh, and it told me, she said, I was at home standing in the door. She said, I just screamed when I heard the train blow because I knew your mother's body mm -hmm. was on that train. Dorothy immediately became a new little sister. They have always been close. All of the children attended school and eventually graduated from nearby Gary District High School. Mama was always so proud. She'd tell people, I've had six to graduate from Gary. So, and she said, well, Dorothy is seven. Mm -hmm. Very proud of that. During the time he was going to college, he sold fish. Fish would come on, you know, like once a week. Fish would come in, I think, on the train, packed in ice, and Herbert would sell fish throughout the community. Also sold newspapers, the Pittsburgh Courier. It was a black paper. In fact, they call it the colored paper because the paper was colored, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a white paper. It was sort of beigey pink-like. Mm -hmm. And Herbert cut hair at home, cut hair on the front porch. Different people in the community. Herbert cut hair, probably for a quarter a haircut. Herbert finished school at Bluefield, and he got a teaching job, and he taught at Elkhorn High School while he was still living at home, you know. You had to go across Elkhorn Mountain to get to where he taught at, and he was always late leaving home, always, <laughs> always late. Mama said, I just tell the Lord, you take care of fools and babies. You know he ain't no baby. <laughs> But he'd leave running out there in that car. He had an old Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. He'd leave running out there in that car, running across the mountain to get to school. Now, his wife was one of his students. But they didn't ma marry, you know, for several years later after she had finished, you know, high school. During World War II, Herbert served in the Army from 1942 through 1945, later serving in the Korean War. He earned the Bronze Star and the United Nations Service Medal during his time in Korea. He got married to Ida Bell Marshall in 1942 and they had three children, Marva, Nikki, and Manessa. Very proud of his daughters, very proud of them. You know, Marva with uh, her Harvard education, you know, and so proud of uh, 
Manessa, you know. Manessa had a, what, bachelor's degree in English, so he's very proud of her, and her, her death hit him really hard. Really hard, you know. He told me he never would get over it. But he was very proud of his children, you know. Well, Nicky, uh, you know, he's uh, made his home there with Nicky all this time, and she has just been a, a rock and a fortress, you know, for him. Throughout the years, Herbert has exemplified a quiet strength. His life experience and education over the decades is rich, yet he is a humble man. Herbert Ferguson has a bachelor's and master's degree. He was an educator, a highly skilled social worker. He was a barber, a successful entrepreneur, and business leader in Youngstown, Ohio. He continues to be a central and enduring force in his family. Herbert, always a kind person, always encouraging you. He always had an encouraging word for you. If you talk to Herbert, you always felt better, whatever your situation or your circumstances were, always. Memories of growing up run deep. We, listen, we were, Herbert and Lucian went to Miss Dudley's house. And Herbert must have been, how much, how old was older you than Lucian? Four, four years. Mm -hmm. Okay, then Lucian must have been 14. You would have to know our grandmother, she was real street. So I, and I was little, really little. And they come, were coming back from Miss Hattie Dudley's house. She was Hattie and Mr. Brooke. They were coming back, and Mama said, Mama said, Grant, Grant. She said, here they come. She said, it's Herbert and Lucian. <laughs> said Lucian, uh, to Herbert and uh, took Lucian down to Hattie, Dudley, uh, Hattie Dudley's house. She said, they've been up there drinking that old julep. <laughs> oh, when they come, oh, whenever they come, they, oh, were, they, were just, they were just singing. When they come, they was just singing Lucian and Herbert. Listen. Mama said, Grant, Grant. She said, when they come in here, she said, I want you to get on, do something to them. Daddy, I had him a few drinks. He laying across the bed in his long underwear. You know, <laughs> laid on down there. He didn't say nothing. She said, Grant, I want you to say something to him. He said, that's the way you raised a man. Mama just saw red and she just went crazy. So they come on in. Y'all come in the door there. You know, it was a bedroom right there on the left. Yeah. Y'all come in there. Mama snatched you in there. And she, you about 16 years old. She went to beating on her and frailing on his head like he ain't never been beat. Lucian out there, he drunk. He's kids, you know, 14 years. He out there kicking on the door while Mama ain't know what the door shit. Beating her to do and I, I thought, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I thought mama gonna kill him. She gonna kill him. Lucy out said, oh she mama come to the door. She said, what are you doing? Hey, Lucian said, Lucian said, I'm mad. Mama said, man, oh she just turned purple. She snatched him in there and then she went to whooping on both of them. She beat him good. And, and for then daddy got up off the bed and he always partial Lucian. Like he went in there and she, he grabbed the switch, a belt, whatever it was, away from her. Oh my goodness. Mm. By then she went crazy. I think she saw all with it. Mama didn't know where to stop with No, she didn't. For, for me, it was good time. That's why I went back there every year for the first first ten years I was up here. I went back there every year. Uh -huh. Every year. Some years I went back twice. Yeah. I loved home, boy. <laughs> I loved home. I just couldn't... I, I'd go away, but... I always went back to see Mom and Pop. I always. Sometimes, some years I went back twice. Uh -huh. I love Mom and Pop and Jink and Joan. Herbert Ferguson has served his nation with distinction, served his community productively and tirelessly for decades. He has been a positive role model and friend to many, and perhaps most of all, continues to be a devoted and loving dad, uncle, brother, and grandpa, who we love and honor tonight. <laughs>